Now to build this cajon, I'm gonna try and keep the price a little on the inexpensive side. And with lumber prices being so high, I'm actually gonna try and make this out of some pine furring strips. Yes, I know pine is actually soft and can dent really easy, but keep in mind, this is gonna be the sides of the cajon, not the actual parts that you hit. And the design we settled on is gonna be a hexagon. You know, like the honeybees make, because it should be really simple to make with a bunch of 30 degree cuts. To do all of our initial cuts, I'm gonna use the miter saw. We need to angle it at 30 degrees. I'm gonna try to avoid hitting these knots if possible. So we're gonna make our first initial cut probably about an inch and a half to two inches in. And that way we don't have any major weak points. Now for our second cut, I've set up a stop block at the six inch mark. We're gonna take our initial cut, and we're actually going to flip it upside down, bump it up against the stop block, and then we can make our second one. Then we're gonna repeat that process five more times so we can have a total of six pieces. Once you have all of them cut, this is a good point to pause and test all the angles to make sure they're pretty close. And as you can see here, the angles are pretty good. It looks like a nice hexagon, so this should be great to work with. Next up, I'm actually going to rip these down on the table saw, because right now they're a little bit tall, and I want to make them a little bit thinner so it's easier to handle. This will also help clean up a lot of the imperfections you'll find on furring strips. Another thing to keep in mind with furring strips is that the side profiles can vary a good bit going the length of the board. So I'm actually going to make two cuts. We're going to take one, make one initial cut, probably about an inch in, and that way we'll have a nice flat edge in all of the pieces, and then we'll flip them around and cut them to the final dimension. Then of course, test these out one more time to make sure they look pretty close. Now before I glue all these together, I need to make a hole in the side of this so that the sound can come out. Like you see on the larger cajones, they're about four inches, and well, of course they can't be that big on this one. So instead of a circle, I think an oval type shape would work better. It still needs to be cleaned up and sanded a little bit, but there we go. And it's now time to glue it together. On the inside of a lot of cajones, they install what they call a snare. This actually goes on the bottom of a snare drum to give it that unique sound. I purchased this affordable pair to go with this cajon, but as you can see here, they're a little bit too long. So I'm just going to cut these right in half to see if I can get that to work. To hold the snares, I'm going to take one of the pieces I cut off earlier, and I'm going to glue it to the opposite side of where the hole is, and then the snares will just be attached to that. To get this snare to press up against the top of the board, I just slightly bent this piece of metal back here, and when it's screwed in place, it should be at a decent angle. And with the snares in place, we can now work on the top and bottom. Now for the actual drum part of the cajon, they recommend it being really thin plywood, like eighth of an inch or thinner. And the only thing I could find that was even close is what they call a utility panel at my local home improvement store. And this measures at 2.7 millimeters, which is just under an eighth of an inch. Here's a little tip for you if you buy this panel. Let me show you. If you could see that, that is uh, quite warped. When I put this in the back of my truck, it was perfectly flat. But I have a feeling the air flowing over my truck and across this board dried out one side and because it's so thin it's just potato chip. So keep that in mind if you're going to buy one of these. This plywood is so thin I have a feeling if I use a regular saw blade it will just shred this. So I'm going to try and use a utility knife and a straight edge. Now of course this is not a perfectly straight cut but it definitely works. And to get the top and the bottom out of our plywood here we're just going to trace this out with a pencil and then try and cut it out again with a utility knife. Now the utility knife is working, but it's just taking a long time. So I'm gonna try and see if I can use a real small pull saw to see if that'll work any better. After a little more trial and error, the easiest way to actually cut this out for me was to trace it out, then use a utility knife to actually sever all the top fibers along those lines, and then get a jigsaw with a really fine tooth blade on it, and it cuts it out really quickly. Makes it nice and sharp edges too. Now for the side that does not have the snare, I'm actually just going to glue it together so it has a nice clean look. And for the opposite side, I believe I'm just going to add some screws in each edge and that'll allow me to get in here in case I need to ever fix anything. And it's a good idea to pre-drill these holes so that we don't have any cracking. Also I need to countersink the screws so they sit flush. To smooth out some of these rough edges, I'm gonna use an eighth inch round over bit in my palm sander to hopefully make quick work of this. Then I'm just gonna use a hand sander to finish off any of these burrs that may still be there. 
Now this is nearly complete and it's getting really, really exciting. At this point, I definitely recommend putting some kind of a urethane or maybe a lacquer or something on it so the oils from your hands don't discolor the wood. Plus, that urethane, that finish, will definitely make this grain really stand out and look really, really good. Another option with this setup is to actually put some loops on the end of your cajon and actually put a belt that'll wrap over your neck and that way it can hang kind of down low and you don't have to worry about holding it and you can play it with both hands. Now let me show you a little sound test. First off, I'm not a professional. You can hear the difference a little deeper. A little bit louder or higher pitch on the ends. All right, so you can. All right, let's flip it over. Here's where the snare comes in handy. Might be a little bit hard to tell, but it's still a little deeper in the center than it is on the outside, but either way you have the snare playing. This cajon is really, really cool. I love the two-tone sides here. And if you could think of any other options I could have done to make this even better, please list that in the comments. You not only help me, but you'll help everybody else who's watching. Now, if you enjoyed this video, you might want to check out this one.